source to target showed you, we do support a variety of different sources that are kind of pre-built. But let's say there's a source that you don't have in that list, right? And you want to connect, you can build that using the action river. So when you go into the action river, the first thing that you see is like a multi-action as well as a rest action step. We'll touch on the multi-action later, uh, but essentially that's chained together uh, action steps. So this rest action is gonna be like a very simple kind of UI over here. If you're familiar with Postman or anything like that, um, this is pretty much very similar to that as well. Um, it gives you an option to kind of type in that API URL that you're looking to connect to. Uh, you can choose the you know, different request method that you're gonna run, whether that be like a get, put, post, patch, or delete. You can add any parameters that you want. Um, you can also add any headers that you want. Um, and authentication type, we support both basic, basic auth and OAuth too, kind of built in already. There's a few other things that kind of make this dynamic as well, um, but we'll hop into that once we get into the example. So we'll kind of start with our first example. So our first example is gonna be connecting to like a historical exchange. So we do actually have an exchange rate service already built in within Rivery. And this is within the currency service over here within the toolkits. So this is actually based off the European Central Bank. But let's just say there's something else, like another currency that you want to pull that's not within the European central banks like repertoire. So a lot of our customers, or some of our customers at least, use this currency API. And the one that we're specifically going to be looking at here is going to be the historical exchange rate. So just walking over the kind of like documentation for this currency API, we'll see that all we have to do is kind of you know run this call to this URL. We're running a GET request, and there are a few parameters that are required. So the API key and the date are required, but we'll also pass through a base currency if we want. Um, in this example, we'll use USD, and we'll also get a list of currencies that we want exchange rates for, for that specific date that we have selected here. You'll see the sample response is gonna be JSON over here, and I'll also show you kind of how this is gonna be parsed through using Rivery. So for the currency list, if we click on the currency list over here, we'll see all the different currencies that are available. And this is way more extensive than the European Central Bank has to offer. But at the very bottom, there are a few interesting ones here uh, that we'll use in our sample. So these are specifically like cryptocurrencies, uh, but it is interesting that these are also pulled through here. And we'll kind of use that in our documentation or in our kind of example that we're gonna pull through. So we'll start building out this request. So to build out this request, we just click on create river at the very top and select action river. So we're gonna select the rest action just because this historical exchange rate only requires one call. So we'll start by just typing in the URL over here. So we'll just paste in the URL from their documentation, api.currencyapi.com, and we're using their version three and we're just hitting the historical endpoint. We're actually just gonna run a get request here, uh, but we do have to add in a few parameters. So if you remember, a few of these parameters were the ones that were required, were the API key, as well as the date. Um, in addition to that, we do want to add a few other optional um, parameters as well. And this is going to be base currency, as well as the list of currencies that we want to exchange rates for. So for base currencies, we'll use USD. And then for the currencies that we want exchange rates for, we'll use a list of them over here that I've kind of pre-selected. So the next question comes, how do we put in this API key? So you can also just type in your API key over here. But for most people that isn't secure enough, just because you want your API key to kind of be masked. What you can do is you can click new connection, give this connection name. So we'll just call this test API key and we'll give this a date. And you can just type in your API key over here or like what you want to call it. So this could just be like API key and you can give it a value. If you mark this checkbox over here as is password, we actually encrypt this and add this into our AWS KMS server and it's stored so you never have any like plain text. I've already actually created one over here for this specifically. So we'll use this currency API one over here. So once we have this currency API one selected, if you click on the variables, you can actually just bring in this variable name and just select this over here. And now we're bringing in this variable within uh, for this API key. So over here, you'll just see that this variable is now passing through the currency API or the API key that we've previously selected. The next thing that we wanna do is we wanna walk through um, the date. So how do we wanna format the date? So if you look at their date, it looks like it's in a year month date format. So we can either type that in here or we can make this date dynamic. To make this date dynamic, all we have to do is select the time period. 
and give a given start date. So we'll just say at the beginning of the month, so March 1st, and we can even choose the time format that we want. So this is more important kind of when we go into the next step where we kind of show you how we pull this into like um, a data warehouse and how we make this dynamic. So same thing as the API key. For the time period, all I have to do is select the variables again, and you'll see this time range start date has now popped up. So just by selecting the time period, you create that variable and you just paste that right in here. And now we have, you know, an automated kind of API key that we're passing through, as well as a date range, as well as our base currency and currency selected. We also have this test rest action option available here. So we can just click this and this actually runs this API key and gives us a brief sample of kind of what that data is going to look like. So over here real quick, we'll see that we're getting a successful 200 response. And this is the action results or the, you know, kind of the data that we're getting back or the package we're getting back. You see that there's kind of two areas within here. There's a meta as well as a data. And really we just want the data because that's actually what it contains. So to kind of drill down into that, we just select the results option over here. And we'll see that there's three results types. There's a response, a variable, as well as data. So response just kind of gives you what we see over here, just the full response, as well as the response status code. And it's more just used for like troubleshooting or kind of like figuring out what data you're getting back. Variables, we'll touch in in our later example, but this just gives you, yeah, you, know, you can kind of store the different variables that you want to return over here. Uh, and lastly, data is more used if you're writing this data into like a data warehouse. So this is where we can kind of like drill down into a specific JSON syntax path um, and see that example. So over here, we'll just type in dollar sign dot data. And now this is going to actually drill down into this data field. So we can even test this over here and we'll just see kind of how this shows up now. As this is kind of loading, I'll, okay. So this is loaded now. And now you can see that we're parsing through into the data level rather than just at the top level. There's a few other options here as well within the results details. Um, this is more for like configuring different, you know, responses. You can either configure things as like a CSV response uh, or a JSON one. Uh, here you can see the different pagination options that we support. You can paginate by offset, by page, or you can choose next page in response. And lastly, we had advanced options here as well. So you can like hold the process for, you know, X amount of seconds before you get a key. You can send requests in loop and you can monitor specific keys as well. The one thing that we are gonna check is we're gonna add dates variables to the results data. So what this does is this is actually gonna pass through this time period that we're using into the results that we're getting once it's parsed through. So we'll just give this a title. We'll call this um, a currency exchange, um, REST API, and then we'll just give this a date. So March 9th, 2023. And then we'll just click save. So now that we've built out this API call, the next question is really like, how do we get this API call into like our data target data warehouse, right? So in the create river, we'll head back there again. And we kind of went over like the action step already, right? So this is like, we created that initial API call that we're gonna make to kind of pull the data through, but now how do we get it into, you know, uh, like a data warehouse or like a cloud storage? So that's gonna be a source of target river. So kind of as we went over before, like we do have a bunch of different like pre-built, uh, you know, integrations, and these are all managed by Rivery. Like we update them as their updates come out as well. But at the very bottom, there's actually one over here that's called a REST API source. So this REST API source actually lets us pull through those action rivers that we've previously created. So over here, you'll see one of those dropdowns that we've selected is just that currency exchange REST API that we created. So from here, all you have to do is actually select that same connection that we have. And this is just bringing in that API key as well. And we can designate like the specific start date that we wanna run this for. So let's say we wanna run this for like a time period rather than one specific date. Uh, we can just choose that over here. So let's say we wanna run this from the 1st of March to the 4th of March, right? So we want more days than just one specific date that we pulled in the you know test rest example that we did. So we can actually do that through this interval chunk size as well, where we select daily and we select that interval size as one. So this is kind of how Rivery adds in like that dynamic date option available for you, where now we're running for like four days straight and we're kind of chunking that into specific days. So though the endpoint only accepts one day at a time, what we're actually doing is sending four separate requests and pulling that data for you. And then we aggregate that data for you and then write that into your target data warehouse. So we'll just call this currency exchange 
to, you know, we'll write this to Snowflake and we'll just call this, give it a date as well. And then next we select our target. So let's say we're gonna choose Snowflake. Same thing, if you don't have a connection already, it gives you instructions of kind of how to connect, but you can select one over here and just choose the specific database, the schema and the table name that you wanna write this to. So let's say we wanna write this into something called like currency exchange rate. And we'll write this into just my test database and my test schema that I have available. There's different loading modes here as well. We have upsert merge, append and overwrite. Upsert merge just merges this onto your Snowflake table off a unique key that you can pre-select. Uh, append just adds this data at the end and then overwrite just overwrite, like truncates the table if it exists and then replaces it as well. So next we hop into the schema. So over here, you'll see we're pulling the source that we've kind of created like as a, you know, a REST API that we custom created. Uh, we're writing this into Snowflake. And then we just kind of want like to kind of see what that schema mapping looks like. So to do that, we just hit auto mapping. And what this does is it actually makes that API call for one specific day, just as a sample. And it parses out that JSON and then breaks that out into different um, columns for you. So over here, you'll see, you know, all the different currencies that we've added. Um, we'll add in multiple fields for these as well. So it's both the you know, code as well as the value. And they'll give you at the very bottom that request start date as well as the end date. So this is kind of what we configured in the advanced settings earlier where we were able to pass through like the specific start and end date parameters that we were passing through. The last thing over here is just the settings page and you can just schedule this to run at whatever frequency you want, whether that be you know, every 15 minutes, every hour, once a day, um, or you can use a custom cron expression here as well. You can also get notifications if it fails or if it, there's a warning, but for now, we'll just run this real quick. So as this is kind of running, um, we'll kind of show you, I'll show you at least what's happening over here. So on the activity side, you see that this data has now pulled, it's like currently pulling from the um, REST API and writing this into a file zone. The next step is to take that from the file zone and then write that into your Snowflake instance. So this is kind of the two separate steps. This is kind of the one where we're creating this native source. And then this is the part where we're kind of building out that connection to pull from the native source, write it into your data warehouse, and then you know schedule that to run at whatever frequency you want. So it looks like this has run successfully. So it ran both steps, You know, first pulling the data and then writing it into the data warehouse. And I can just run a quick query for you over here um, and then show you what the results look like. So this is kind of what the results look like. So we're just running this, you know, select all statement here for you within, and you'll see over here that these are the different, you know, um, currency that we pulled through. So most of these are just going to be crypto currencies. Um, and then we'll see the exchange rate to the US dollar, and it will give you a request start date here as well. So as you can see, it ran for all four days, starting March 1st to March 4th. Cool. So hopefully that shows you like a brief example of kind of how we would pull from a very simple API um, into um, your data warehouse and how kind of Rivery handles all those different parts from like the dynamic dates, the encrypted, you know, um, tokens, as well as, you know, the parsing out of the JSON as well.